Girlfriends Podcast, where we discuss life, love, laughter, and everything in between. We're your hosts. I'm Sybil Amuti. And I'm Brandis Daniel. And we have with us a third great girlfriend today. Woo! Miss Rosie Uruguay. Hey! Did I pronounce that right? I got it right? You got it, Brandis. <laughs> good, hey, great good, girlfriends. Good, good. We got yeah. it, Brandis. <laughs> So this is such a treat for us because we're basically sharing our resource with you guys. Some of you ask us, how do we manage to do so much? How are we able to keep up with all of the things on our plate? And one of the resources and tools that we use is Miss Rosie as our productivity coach. So we are sharing her with you today. Hey, hey. Hello. <laughs> Don't be scared. This is not going to hurt. It's not going to bite. <laughs> this is going to be fun. Get your pen and paper. No, seriously, because Rosie has um, been just a, a huge example in our lives of a woman who has uh, taken a hold of the things that she wants to see manifested and really gone after that with pure ambition, intention, and action. And I think it's so important that um, when you see people like that, you grab them up and put them in your, in your pocket and say, all right, it's time for us to use you to help transform the way we approach certain things. And so for our business, Brandis, excuse me, not Brandis, Roseanne, <laughs> Roseanne has been instrumental in really uh, structuring the vision. Kind of, you know, we have, we have the vision in the cloud and we look up at that big cloud of vision and then it's like, okay, how do we, how do we take that vision and lay it out onto some days and months and hours? And I think that, um, Roseanne, you've been really a force Thank you. Thank you. Boris. And so I, I, we were saying earlier, Roseanne, let this be proof that we are actually recording today <laughs> because you are here with us. There you go. <laughs> so we are being productive with our time. But um, I think it's so important, girlfriends, to first understand the woman because we're not sitting with um, someone who is, is just a regular old girl. I mean, none of us are regular old girls, but I really think you, you fascinate me in the way that, that you move. And navigate life and since we've known you for years but knowing you and hearing you say that you you want something and then seeing it happen five six months later you know with the baby on one side and the <laughs> husband on the other is like wow so I love that I want to know from you Roseanne and and aside from that we were laughing about the fact that Roseanne is Jamaican <laughs> What yeah. about Jamaican great girlfriends? <laughs> By default, you know, Jamaican Roseanne is going to have, you know, three jobs, right? That's that stereotype. I know, right? <laughs> but how many jobs do you have, Roseanne? So I work in human resources <laughs> and I'm a productivity coach. So let's count them. I have two jobs. Let me rephrase that. How many titles? Yes. Now that's a different story. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> let's do that. Let's do that. How many titles do you have? Woman, wife, okay. mom. Mm -hmm. So I am married to an amazing Nigerian man. We've been married for coming up on five years. Yeah. I have two boys. I have a three-year-old whose name is Hadar, uh -huh. and I have a one-year-old whose name is Othniel. Oh, and they're so cute. Oh, so cute. They're yummy. I <laughs> love it. And so then you work in HR. I work in human resources, yes, um, full-time, and I commute into the city. I'm a Jersey girl now. Okay, okay. <laughs> welcome, welcome. And you're an author. I am an author. I have two books. I have a book called Seven Pounds, 13 Ounces. Mm -hmm. It's about my spiritual journey to motherhood. Mm -hmm. And I have a second book called Plug In, A Woman's Charge to Pursue in Harmony. Awesome. And they're both available on Amazon, correct? Both available on Amazon and on my website. I'll spell that out for you at the end. Okay. And then you're a sister? <laughs> sister, friend, uh -huh. auntie. Uh-huh. The list goes on. Mentor, <laughs> advocate, volunteer. Yes. Because we as women wear all these titles, right? We sure do. We do. And we try to wear them all in one moment. 
and it, and it overwhelms us <laughs> sometimes Absolutely. and it keeps us from being able to be effective at one because we're thinking, uh oh, but I'm a sister in the back end, but I mm-hmm. owe this at work, but my husband's looking at me, but the baby <laughs> wants me, but my friend is calling me, but my visions just won't happen. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, and a lot of times something's going to fall through the cracks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately. Absolutely. You were you were talking with us earlier about this uh, really alarming percentage that I never want to be a part of, but oh, I want you to just share. Yes. Yeah, so great girlfriends, 92% of people do not accomplish their New Year's resolutions. So we're talking about only 8% of people are slaying those goals. Mm-mm-mm. Full transparency, I was in that 92% for a long time. <laughs> Haven't we all just, been there? I'm just going to go ahead and say yes. I held that percentage down for yes. a long time. And I realized I would, New Year's resolutions weren't for me. Let me right. tell you. I'm going to tell you what stopped me from making it to that 8%. What stopped you? Tell us, Brandon. <laughs> These 10 pounds. Um. <laughs> These 10 pounds keep stopping me from making it to the 8%. I hear you. That's me every year. Yes, you know. So with baby number one, I was 160. Then I went to 199. Then I was like, yeah, you know, New Year's resolutions, dropping the 20 pounds, dropping 30 pounds, making all these unrealistic goals. And after baby number one, I'm like, yeah, so we're not going to make those unrealistic goals because (laughs) they're just not happening. And that's what's putting me in the 92%. Right. So with baby number two, I was like, all right. I need to figure out something more manageable, more realistic, because this way is not going anywhere, especially since I wasn't planning to do anything different. I was still <laughs> eating my ice cream. I was still eating my cake and cookies. Right. And I used to say stupid things. Well, not used to, I still do. Like, I'm allergic to the gym. You know, I can't do all that. So, with not shave. some shade right Listen. now. That's my line. <laughs> and you know that's my line. I have, I'm allergic. I, I I I goes. I'm telling you, on. yeah, there's something there that's just not for me. You know, you're on a treadmill for 10, 15 minutes, but you're in the same place. That doesn't make any kind of sense. So, yeah, that wasn't for me. So I realized that is not the way to get out of that 92%. We got to do some things differently. Later. Right. Yeah. right. <laughs> no, you're, you're absolutely, you're preaching it. And, and I know, you know, I'm not going to pretend I'm the only girlfriend in this recording. I know some of y'all are listening and you're saying that's me, Alch. Is she watching me? Is she watching me? Right. <laughs> right. She got eyes on right you. Now. <laughs> and yes, we do see you because we hear you because we get the messages about how you finally decided to make a move or mm-hmm. how this has been holding you back for years and years mm-hmm. and years and years and years. And success doesn't come without struggle. It's not that you don't have struggle along the way. Because I'm sure if you're going to share your story with us, there have been struggles for you to get to each of these milestones. But there's something I hear in you about intention Mm -hmm. um, that pushed you over the edge of saying, I want want what I want and I'm going to go after it Mm -hmm. and teach other people how to do it as well. Mm -hmm. Because what's so effective about you is you don't keep it to yourself. You really do. I mean, you're coaching women all around the U.S., with these tools, a pra- a practical tools about around you know making the calendar work for you. So, mm-hmm. but let's go back into your calendar. Let's let's, let's do get, it. Let's get some juice on this story <laughs> of the woman that um, is now coaching us all and 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 keeping us tight on our time. All right, so let's go all the way back. Take us back. Let's so go. she already told you that I'm Jamaican. I was born in Connecticut, but seconds later, six weeks later, I moved to Jamaica. So that beautiful accent that you hear right now, that's the Jamaican representing, right? Yeah, I'm on. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's not get civil on the Jamaican accent. She sucks at it. You should hear her try to mock me. Anyways. So I lived in Jamaica until I was 16 years old. I lived with my mom and my dad um, before they got divorced. My dad moved to New York, and then I was living with my mom, did high school, and then once I finished, I came to New York to join my dad. But I always saw my mom as such an amazing woman who was able to accomplish so much. She was a mom of two. She was active in her church. She had, you know, my parents had businesses together. They had all these um, recording studios. They had... Um, a babysitting company. They did all these things. So just watching my mom, it was just so amazing to see how productive she was with the resources that she had. She never made excuses. She just made sure that whatever we needed, we had. My dad was still in the picture. And he, when Simba talks about them stereotypes with the hardworking man and the hardworking Jamaican person, on point. My dad always held on a job, always made sure that we had everything we need. So I had two amazing parents who were amazing examples of productivity. Mm-hmm. Wow. And so once you moved to New York, you had to decide, okay, what is my path going to be? Mm-hmm. And 
I love that you say my path because up to this day, I still, if I look back at my life, it's not a well orchestrated plan. It's not like one of those people who said, okay, I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to go to law school. I'm going to be a lawyer. I'm going to practice law. My path is nothing like that. Mm -hmm. I went to King's Bar Community College to do an associate's in travel, tourism, and hospitality. Mm -hmm. From there, I went to Baruch to do my bachelor's degree and my master's in corporate communication. So no tie in there, right? Mm -hmm. Then I was working as an event planner for the bar president of Brooklyn. And then after that, I did a lot of events. I did business development and consulting. Then I moved to China to teach English. Yes. Fast forward, I come back to... New York, I'm working in human resources. I'm looking at my life like, wait, what is the plan? Like, mm -hmm. I have all these different titles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like Sybil was saying, you know, it's not just woman, mom, but it's human resources. It's teacher, it's mm -hmm. educator, all these different things. And it's not a well-orchestrated plan. But when you look at everything that happened, all those skills and talents and abilities are what help you to do what you're doing today. Yeah, that's so true. I, I think that. that kind of stuff... You know, when we look at the staging behind marriage and motherhood, you know, truth be told, it's not a well-orchestrated plan. Mm -mm. It's a flex plan, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, We're tweaking daily. Yeah, and part of being successful, feeling successful at being a wife and being a mother is having the flexibility to tap into different parts of your life. And so when you have... Um, when you have sort of some fluidity around mm -hmm. what life will be like, mm -hmm. it gives it opens up space for that. It's not you always um, needing a perfect picture mm -hmm. and trying to build this perfect picture of what it's going to be, right. but just being open to what it offers you. Right. Yeah. And I love that perspective because if I was just in this tunnel vision or this narrow-minded perspective of I'm an accountant or I'm an educator or I'm X, Y, Z, I would never allow myself to have author as mm -hmm. one of my titles. Mm -hmm. I would never allow myself to have productivity coaching mm -hmm. in my circle because I would say, no, I'm an accountant. Mm -hmm. This is what I do. No, I'm a lawyer. I practice law. But when you have that fluidity, like Sybil said, it allows you to open up yourself to more experiences and better opportunities. I love that because I think sometimes um, our great girlfriends choose not to pursue something that they love because mm -hmm. it's not going to make sense to other people. Mm -hmm. Ooh, like, you know, how am I going to be a doctor but mm -hmm. then make cakes on the weekend? Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. And so they decide, you know, because this is going to look crazy, because I'm going to have a hard time explaining this to people, mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it, which is insane. That's it so is. Shy the way. It's it so is. Yeah, so. it really is. What well, do you that's good, think, Brandis. like, as you've been coaching women, what are you finding, like, the biggest challenges? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. A lot of people think that productivity coaching is just a checklist. I have 10 things to do today, and as long as I check them off, I'm, I accomplish something. Mm -hmm. But the biggest challenge is the mind, the mm -hmm. mindset. I've spoken to women who have the imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. What that means is you believe you're a fraud. So maybe you want to model and you're looking at yourself like, who do I think I am? I'm not good enough to model. Or you want to start a podcast. You want to write a book and you're like, no, I can't do that. People are going to think that I'm a fraud. Or you have these people who have all these talents, but they think people are going to find them out. They're going to say, Oh, you're not as smart as you really are. Mm -hmm. You have women like Maya Angelou. She's written on her 11th book. She was still saying, they're going to find me out. Mm -hmm. Uh-oh. They're going to realize. They're going to realize that I'm not that smart. Isn't that something? Maya Angelou. Isn't that something? Wow. <laughs> so the biggest challenge I've seen is getting out of your mind. Yeah. Not, not allowing the fear of success to cripple you. Not allowing the fear of failure to cripple you. Not allowing the fear of the unknown to cripple mm -hmm. you. The unknown is a big one. Mm -hmm. So what I love about the productivity coach, and it's not just, hey, do this, do that. Did you do that? Did you do that? It's more of what is it that is preventing you from doing it? Mm -hmm. What are you afraid of? What is it that we need to work through? Where do you need support? Mm -hmm. Is it that you don't have time because you're spending all your time on social media? Is it that you don't have time because you need someone to help you with cleaning the house or babysitting for two hours? Where is it that we need to work time out? What mm -hmm. are the resources that you need? I'll say one of the big things you helped me with, um, my first go around with you. <laughs> Spend many rounds. You see how she said? Her <laughs> first go around. My first go around. Like, You're... like the first time I was in jail. Right. Right, right, right. <laughs> that first stint in prison. <laughs> but first stint, yes. But, 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 but part of what was so good was helping me see my time. 
Literally, you know, when you, when you, they, the, anyone, any financial planner will tell you, if you don't have eyes on your money, you won't have any money. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> so if you don't have eyes on your time, you won't have any right, time. Right, you right, always right. think that it's stacked because you're right. like, you measuring your time against those titles. Mm-hmm. Right? And I think what was so valuable for you, for us, the first go around, because now I use it now is having my eyes on my time to really see there's a lot more time in my schedule mm-hmm. than I actually have accounted for. Mm-hmm. But if I don't put my eyes on right. it mm-hmm. and actually see it so I can map it out, I won't navigate it. That's absolutely you true. You taught me that. that Thank is you. A, my pleasure. I'm a better woman because of that. I love it. <laughs> better woman. And yes. it's so it's so amazing that Sybil said that because Sybil went from I'm not a morning person to hey let's do a 7 a.m. call. Child. Sybil went from <laughs> I can't do this. I don't have time to. The clock is my friend. I'm a friend of the clock. Yes. You know, she <laughs> yes. totally changed her mindset. And it just shows that mindset is a major part of, you know, being able to accomplish what you want to. But how big is that, though? Think about that. The clock is my friend. It's huge. That's civil life. <laughs> it's huge because I think one of the things that really stops us from even moving forward is we literally look at things we have to do and it seems like they are all stacked up in front mm-hmm. of us, yeah. right? And Everything so, is important. And it's a every, moving truck. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> yes. And, 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 you know, you add one more thing to that and, I, and, and you just feel like, I just can't. Yeah. Like, you just... And so, you know, I know part of it for me is writing it all down. Absolutely. Like, just writing it all yes. down takes the pressure off. Yeah. Yes. And I can actually make a plan for it. It's yeah. a brain dump. Yes. yes. Totally. And then you get to see, is this really priority? Like, do I really need to do the laundry today or can I do it tomorrow? Yeah. The laundry never makes my list. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Listen, you do what works for you. That's the one thing that's never on my list. I feel like laundry for me is background music. Like it's total while background I'm doing music. something right. else, laundry. I just yeah, I just throw it in. Through, you know, <laughs> thank goodness I'm not like lugging laundry down the street like Oof. I did when I first moved oh to Harlem. Girl, high five pounds oh, on that. I used God. to drop it off. I was like, no, this is not an effective use of my time. Okay, and reclaiming I, my yeah, time. I'm not doing it. But but how powerful is that? You think about what, what we're talking about. Most of us at work, you have however many hours in a day, and most people feel like they don't have enough time in their day to finish mm-hmm. the work that they need to get done. Mm-hmm. And you carry that that mindset. That's eight eight to nine hours. Most of us mm-hmm. we carry that home. There you go. We don't leave that on the on the on the table and it's then true. commute. We carry that into the car. I don't have enough time, mm-hmm. and then yeah. this commute is an hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't have enough time to call people, and then I can't cook, mm-hmm. and then I don't have time for the gym because I don't have enough time. We just keep carrying that, carrying yeah. that, carrying that, and keep telling we ourselves that. The power we wake of up words. with it. There you go. We wake up talking about I don't have enough time. I don't have yeah. enough time. I'm working in um in this uh, in the mentor one of the mentor circles I'm working on. We talked about having ten percent of your time for yourself. That's two point four hours in a day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the first thing was like. Right. I don't have any time. Where am I going to get yeah. 2.4 hours? Where from are you going to get it from yeah. the 24? Right. right. You have it. <laughs> right. There you go. You have it. It's it's. But if you don't dedicate it, yeah. you, you somebody's going to make use of that time. Yeah. Yes, My kids, true. if I don't tell them, get out the way. Get out the way. <laughs> go <laughs> find a hobby. Right. They will snatch those hours as their yeah. own. Or my husband, with all the love in his heart, people, people will come, will, oh, yeah. people will come and for account time. for your time or your job. They'll take it. They'll yeah. gladly yeah. take your they sure time. Will. I love that you ladies said that. So Brandis talked about writing it down. And then Simba talked about other people making use of your time if you're not going to make use of it. What I love about that is what I wrote in my book, Plugin. So there's a chapter that's called Say No. Mm-hmm. And when you write down your goals or your to-do list, when someone calls and says, Hey, can you watch my kids for four hours? You look at that to-do list. No. Right? (laughs) So obviously it's not about being mean or being rough, but you have to reclaim your time. You have to make sure that what you need to accomplish is set in stone. Obviously you're going to have flexibility. There's going to be a time when someone really needs you. Mm -hmm. Obviously poor planning on their part is not an emergency on yours, but (laughs) sometimes, you know, the to-do list is not going to be as you want it. But when you look at that and you say, I need to accomplish all these things to fulfill my legacy, to create what I need to do, to mm-hmm. make sure that I'm living in my purpose, and someone comes with some foolishness because of their poor planning, yeah, not today. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, that's so true. Absolutely. That's a big part of it. So so let's think about that. Um, we talk a lot about the relationship part of things. And um, as the more people 
that you invite into your life, mm-hmm. say a husband, a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> start with a start with a with a uh, significant other. Okay. And then you start and then you invite children into your life. And then you have all these people that are um really you know organizations. Yes. Uh, yes. You're on the board. You're on the board. You're and, in the sorority. You're in the sorority. You know, you're you volunteering group. at church, yeah. traveling. You, yeah. Yes. And so we have all these commitments. Um sometimes I feel that sometimes those commitments keep us busy, but they don't necessarily commit to the vision. Absolutely. Tell me something that you offer. Uh, well, I've seen you offer to me, but I want you to introduce to the girlfriends of how you make sure things are aligning and with the vision, because, you know, some things are out of season mm-hmm. and a big part of the new year, I think is assessing your time and the seasons you're mm-hmm. in and saying, mm-hmm. okay, wait, that volunteer commitment might need to mm-hmm. shift or, like you said, with the four hours, if I'm going to give you four hours, you're going to need to take four hours of my laundry or my kids or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> something has to give on that. Mm-hmm. But what is something that you um, use as a tool to help us as women see how to bring all that or make sure the vision is always being manifested? So you definitely have to have clarity around your vision because if it's too vague, then it allows for other people to kind of change that vision. Mm -hmm. So once you know what it is that you want to accomplish, that's when you're able to make sure that you're, that it's aligned to what you need to accomplish. So Mm -hmm. let's put it like this. You want to write a book. You look at your time and you say, if I put two hours per day for five days a week, I can write a book. But is that realistic? Do you have two hours per day? Mm-hmm. Not so much. So then you do something more manageable. You break it down into bite-sized pieces. When I wrote my book, I knew there was no way I was going to sit at a computer for two hours without a distraction. So I said, I'm going to commit to 10 minutes Monday through Friday. On my lunch break, I took 10 minutes mm-hmm. to write. And then momentum started building. Mm-hmm. And then as the momentum built, passion started igniting. I'm like, mm-hmm. yes, I'm getting things done. This is getting mm-hmm. exciting. Then once the kids went to bed, I was writing. But it's all about, you know, like we said earlier, looking at your time, putting things in your calendar. That's a tool. Mm -hmm. Because if you have everything in your head, you're putting too much pressure on yourself. So you write your goals down, you put it in the calendar. At 10 a.m., this is what I'm going to do. 12 p.m., this is what I'm going to do. So it's not about being rigid, but it's about being organized and making Mm -hmm. good use of your time. Absolutely. And you you put intention behind it. You made that book a piece of that. And Michelle Thornton and Strategic talked mm-hmm. about that, how she on her commute would take that out. Actually, mm-hmm. she said she was spending an hour on social media. And she was like, you know what? That Instagram hour, I'm going to put towards my book. And there now she's go. on a Strategic 2.0, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Writing towards her third book. But just right. like you, it's you were saying, this time belongs to me. I'm right. going to be intentional about what I want to see happen with it. And big part of your vision was making sure that these books were produced Absolutely. and you must, you must have put a timeline to it. Did Absolutely. you put accountability to it? Did you call five friends or was it just you and God? Like, how did you make sure it's done? Cause a lot of times we'll put things on our calendar mm-hmm. and if nobody's watching, we're like, well, right. I can skip that. Right. And Absolutely. we got to be grown up about this mm-hmm. thing. Absolutely. You know, you can't need somebody all the time, mm-hmm. but sometimes it's good to call a friend and say, hey, mm-hmm. I'm working on this. This, right. is, this is a project and I need you to mm-hmm. keep up with me. Can you handle? Yeah. Accountability is major. Okay. So one thing about me, if I tell you that I'm going to do something, I'm like, crap, why did I tell them that I have to do it? Right? <laughs> like, so if, if it's just you, you'd be like, ah, okay, tomorrow I'll do it. But once you have that accountability where someone is expecting a result at the end of the timeline that you told them, that helps so much. Mm-hmm. So, what I did, I started a challenge. I knew a couple people who for years were saying, I want to write a book, I want to write a book, I want to write a book, or I want to learn to swim, I want to do, you know, whatever it is mm-hmm. that they were saying. And I sent a text message and I said, hey, that goal that you were talking about. How about we keep each other accountable? I'm like, all right, let's do it. Let's do it. So I would send a text message like, time to write or make sure you write today. Text me when you're done. And then if I missed the day, they would send me, did you write today? And I'm like, oh, crap. And then I'll respond to him and say, I just finished. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so that accountability helped. Uh-huh. So, you know, sometimes you may not have a friend who can do that because they have their own things that they're working on or maybe accountability or organization is not their strong point. Mm -hmm. But you have to find someone, whether it's someone you can trust as a friend or someone that you hire, you have to get that accountability. Mm -hmm. That support is necessary. Sometimes you can put a message on Facebook and say, hey, need accountability on this. Mm -hmm. And a friend from fifth grade Mm -hmm. will be like, I got you. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally, when you put it out there, you never know who, or you know, when you find meetups or group circles that are 
um, mission oriented around the same thing. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's entrepreneurship. Someone in that circle Uh can support you. Absolutely. But we can't pretend that the resources aren't out there. The resources are available. They are. They are here. Yes. Yeah. So it's being creative. So what, what do our great girlfriends need to walk away with? Yeah. So I personally believe that everyone needs a coach. It mm-hmm. can be an accountability partner, like, you know, Sybil was saying, just a friend that you call. It could be a group that you go into, but everyone needs a coach. If you think about the people who are successful, you have artists, they have a coach. Mm-hmm. You have sports players, you know, all these athletes, they have coaches. Why is it that we don't need a coach? That's true. Right. Because right? half the people who are killing it in sports right now would not be killing it without a coach. Yeah. There you go. They have some kind of training yeah. and there's conditioning. I, why do we think as women, as women, we get here and we got this? Right. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, literally, I just got that visual and I was like... Yeah, they're the best because sometimes they have the best coaches. They have the yeah, best they have coaches. Someone conditioning them yeah. and, and, and teaching them things that they can't see and helping them with their blind spots. And you're absolutely right about that. Yeah. And I think everyone needs you. I'm going to say it, Roseanne. I yeah. think you are super yes, sharp. Yes, thank you. <laughs> you are. And it's, it's not a shameless plug, but you really are. <laughs> you are super sharp at what you do and you love it. I don't I do love, love managing my time as, lo- as much as I love it being managed. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. love doing it. I like for someone to check in with me and, and say things. And keep me accountable on certain, I, but I don't love the the organizational part of it. I'm I'm a creative. I like to be mm-hmm. fluid. Mm-hmm. I don't like the commitment. But you don't. And have I'm total to opposite. But you yeah. even have space for more clients right now. I actually do. I okay. can take on a few clients. I actually oh, do have space. Girl, y'all better okay. email the great go. girlfriends at Gmail because <laughs> I'm just saying this year is yours. All right. I'm sorry. Next tip. I'm sorry. You have to eliminate your vices. So Mm. if it's social media, whatever is distracting you, you have to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. If it's the girlfriend who's like, hey, let's go to brunch, you say, how about you come to my house and we work on our goals? Mm. You know, I love social media. I love Instagram. Mm -hmm. But I can't devote all my time to Instagram. Mm -hmm. I have to make sure that if it's something that's taken away from what I need to accomplish, you have to go. Yeah, absolutely. I have to manage time around that. It could be the fact that you're not focus on what you need to do so everything else becomes a priority mm-hmm. hey can you help me move today well i don't, I don't have anything else doing so mm-hmm. sure you know mm-hmm. you have to eliminate the vices eliminate the distractions and tv shows tv yes. shows i'm not a big tv watcher yes. but that can suck your time uh-huh. out uh-huh. yes girlfriends what's that show what's that show you got to get rid of it oh this, this is us <laughs> <laughs> You know off the top. I'm just telling you. Oh, I, no, you cry I have river heard, on this. No, I verse. never watched it. You haven't watched it? I have not watched it because oh. I know that I would get addicted oh, and I don't have the time to get addicted. Sophie crying. I already know. Oh, people, so keep, people have told me they have literally sat there and watched the full season. Oh my gosh. It's that good. I can't. That's why, yeah. I, That's why. honestly, that is the one reason why I haven't watched the show. Because everybody telling tells you, me you will suck love you in. So I'm oh like, you can do it. You be done. You know, there's not enough tears in your body for you. There's not enough tears. Like, she sees us because I'm not watching. I was watching like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I mean, I did literally do four episodes at once because oh my I was gosh. so pulled into the storyline. But I cut it. I cut it because I knew that this was going to be a commitment. <laughs> yes. It's a commitment that I could not commit to. Yes, and, and honestly, they're not committing to me like that. So I was like, this is not reciprocal. I'm gonna have to give this up. All there right, next go. tip. I'm sorry. Get rid of the excuses. Ooh, like what? No more excuses. I don't have enough time. Mm-hmm. I don't have enough resources. I don't have what I need. How many great girlfriends have gone back to school to get qualified for something that you are absolutely 100% qualified for? Oof. That's a way to delay Don't your turn goal. us off. <laughs> <laughs> that but is, that's true. It is so right? true. It is the perfect way. Yes, these yeah. certifications, these qualifications. I'm going to tell you a story real quick and you can judge me if you want to. So I wanted to take the PMP. That's the certification that you take for project management. Mm -hmm. I was pregnant. So I had a baby November 2016. And I'm like, yeah, so I'm just going to book the exam for December 2016. What do we talk about in terms of goals being realistic? Taking an exam in a month after having a baby, unrealistic goal. So my husband was like, what are you doing? I said, oh, I'm studying for the exam. And he started laughing because he knew it was probably like the first time I'm taking up the book two days before the exam. <laughs> so I was like, don't worry, I got this. I'm enough, right? I got this. So I go to the exam. It's 300 questions. And I'm like the first one out. I'm like, got this. It's multiple choice. A, B, C, D. Come on. I got this, right? 
And you get the results immediately. And it was like, yeah, so you didn't pass. And I'm like, wait, what? I didn't pass? Right. This is the first time I've failed an exam in my life. Right. <laughs> but what I realized from it is I was trying to get qualified for project management to help with my productivity coaching. Mm. And you already I was five. doing it naturally, right? Yeah. It's not that I was predisposed to productivity coaching, but... I knew what I was doing, yeah. but I was like, no, I need the three letters, the PMP behind my name. So when someone says, oh, what are your qualifications? Oh, you know, well, I have the PMP because I am certified. No, <laughs> yeah. no. Right. I am qualified because of the, the experiences, the quality, yeah. the abilities, the results that I'm achieving mm-hmm. in my own life and in the life of my clients. But I was there busy going ahead to get certifications, knowing that I already had what I wow. needed. Yeah. So get rid of the excuses. Why are you going back to school? Mm-hmm. Right, so you need to know why it needs it needs to match the vision. Motive is everything. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, a, a, a big excuse right now is that it's too cold to go to the gym. <laughs> it's too cold outside. It's to go freezing. To, like the I'm gym with is you, outside. <laughs> like the gym don't have heat, but that's what <laughs> but, but a lot of people are saying. Right, mm-hmm. it's too cold. It's oh, too I've, cold. Said it. <laughs> I've said it. I've cold. said it in some mornings. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, know. we come up with it, or you know, my kid is different. Like you don't know my kid. Right. My kid, Garrett, that's easy for you to say. Some mm-hmm. people have told me, well, you know, Sam and Dylan, you know, they behave differently because I trained them <laughs> <Differently>. to behave <laughs> differently. They got to match the house vision and mm-hmm. they can't run. They cannot run my time. And yeah. they have, and you have to train your kids. And that's an excuse that we, as moms, I know I could pull that one out the hat any day. Right. Week. Uh, she got a fever. <laughs> she got a fever. What does that have to do with my results? Yeah. I can, I can lay her over here and handle that. And I can get it done. But as a mom, we can pull that one. Or my husband's, you know, we can pull from our husbands and call that an excuse. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, mm-hmm. we, we find creative ways. And we, we have do. to eliminate all of that. We do. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And guys, I'm, I'm thinking of a few that I, I need to just wipe. But it's funny how God <laughs> is talking to you behind the message. <laughs> the message behind the message is happening. Yeah. And you know what, girlfriends? A lot of people say, oh, you know, I just can't make a decision. Indecision is a decision because you're not doing anything. By saying, oh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do this. I'm not sure if I want to start. That right there is a decision. So it's not that you're undecided. You just decided not to do it. But what Sybil just said about her kids, major. And I've seen it in action. We were at an event and the event ended and she was like, all right, we're going to go talk to all these amazing women in the room. And she gets a text message about one of her kids. And she says, Rosie, I got to make a quick call because X, Y, Z just happened to my kid. And I'm like, all right. So I'm thinking she's going home. She's like, okay, let's go. Let's go where? We're going to go talk to the woman. Wait, but your child is what? He's with his dad. He'll be okay. (laughs) And if you think about it, it's not negligence. Whatever happened to the child already happened. So her running home, if if the kid fell, the kid fell. (laughs) You going home, what you going to do? Break the fall that already happened? I just don't want to be the hero in my kids' lives all the time. I want other people to have heroic moments. Mm -hmm. That was (laughs) major for me. I was like... send a prayer. (laughs) Yeah. I had to take a page out of Sybil's book real quick. I was like, oh, write that down. Okay. (laughs) Because we want to be free to have these visions manifested. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, if we attach ourselves... Girlfriends, just so you're clear, we got... How many kids upstairs right now? Like four kids. Yes. Yes. And we're here in the basement studio getting it done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we need to know that the vision is moving forward yeah and the kids are not an excuse Mm -hmm. and even with our single moms the kids are not an excuse the absence of a husband is not an excuse not an excuse that's very important for them as well yeah and sometimes you have to get coaches in other areas sometimes you gotta get a mommy coach oh there you go come on you know because that without miss nia yeah my life would be very different Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Very, very different. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to do the great girlfriends mm-hmm. if Scott didn't have a bedtime. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my <laughs> bedtime oh, is a whole It wouldn't other... be possible. Yes. No. Yeah. <laughs> my kids are in bed by seven thirty and I'm right behind them at eight thirty nine. So that hour, hour and a half, that is my time. Mm-hmm. But if they were talking about they're gonna stay up till ten, no, you got to go yeah. to bed. I have things to do. Put your kids to bed. That's that's a free one. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. You need adult silence for a certain set. Oh, peace time of the mind day. is everything. Put those jokers to bed. She said them jokers. Let them say yeah. good night prayers and yes. go to bed. That's so good, Roseanne. So, how do they keep up with you? I love everything that you've um, given our girlfriends, and I think we're gonna keep on having this conversation about Woo! time. Yeah, because we need accountability. Absolutely. 
in order to yeah. achieve the things that we want to achieve this mm-hmm. year. Yeah. You know, what I want to see in our Facebook group and over our testimonials and all the things that we get over email, I want to hear people saying how they took resources around their time, put it on a counter, mapped it out, looked at it, eliminated excuses. And as a result of that, this is what they've now produced at the end of the year. And this is what they've decided to pursue because of that. So that's what I want to hear. I want to hear that. I want to hear us saying, I got out in the cold and I went to the gym, gym. whatever it is. But I want to hear that from our community. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So yes, how do you connect with me? You girls have your pen and paper. Let's do it. Yeah. So I'm on Instagram at R-U-W-A-G-U-E. So that's my first initial and my last name. So R U A R U W A G U E. Uh-huh. And my website is rosanneoagwe.com. So that's R O S E A N N E U W A G U E dot com. You can email me at ruagwe at gmail.com. That's R U W A G U E at gmail.com. <laughs> Got it. Yes. Got it. Yay. Well, we always close out, Rosanne, by thanking our husbands. Kwaku is holding it down. Thank you so much, boy. I love you. And thank you so much to Rich Daniel. Zodua, I love you. Aw, so sweet. And then we thank our baby, Sam and Dylan. I appreciate you for being patient upstairs. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And this guy who I don't hear. Yes, he's <laughs> up there partying too. This uh-huh. is good. And Dar and Othnil for hanging out with Auntie. Oh, so good. And thank you, great girlfriends, for trusting us as your go-to source for everything life, love, and laughter. Make sure you're listening every Wednesday at iTunes, Stitcher Podcast, Republic Podcast, Bean, Spotify, iHeart, and every other podcasting service. Yes, and please check us out on our social. You can find us on our Instagram. The Great Girlfriends. On our Twitter. The underscore Great GFS. Our Facebook. The Great Girlfriends. And please do join our Facebook group and connect with all of the amazing 16,000 plus women there. Wow, sir. Yeah, no, no, awesome. <laughs> Make sure you post your questions online. Share with your friends. Keep, keep listening. And, and keep, keep being, being the a Great, great Girlfriend. girlfriend. Yes, <laughs> I'm Sybil. I'm Brandis. And I'm Roseanne Wagway. And we're signing off. <laughs> Woohoo!